after nearly five decades in politics and three presidential runs, former Vice President Joe Biden finally looks set to take America's top job in January. It's clear that we're winning enough states to reach 270 electoral votes needed to win the presidency. Thank you. Yet celebrations among Democrats will likely be muted. That's because the blue wave they were hoping for never came. So Republicans are likely to hold on to the Senate. Analysts say that will inevitably lead to more gridlock in Congress. But it's the kind that's a win-win for investors. If Biden becomes president, there will be fewer trade wars or no trade wars at all. There will be more calm in the geopolitical realm. Secondly, it's important that the Senate looks likely to remain Republican, which means we don't need to fear tax increases or an attack on branches like high-tech, banks and pharmaceuticals. U.S. shares rallied post-election, led by the Nasdaq, thanks to optimism that tech firms will be able to dodge the tougher regulations Democrats had promised. But the dominance of big tech is unlikely to be top of mind for a Biden White House. Democrats and Republicans seem to agree the most acute crisis America faces is COVID-19. Lawmakers are currently negotiating over the size of a new stimulus package. Democrats want $2.2 trillion, while Republicans support a $1.8 trillion deal. We need another rescue package. <coughs> Clearly, the coronavirus is not gone. In fact, we've got it worse now than we had it in the spring. So our purpose in this race was to win so that we could protect the Affordable Care Act and that we could crush the virus, uh, that we could uh, stop the spread of it, that we could reward our our workers who risk their lives to save lives and now might be losing their jobs. Over the past week, the U.S. has averaged 90,000 new COVID-19 infections a day. Job losses as a result of the pandemic remain elevated. 750,000 Americans filed for unemployment claims last week. While this is much lower than the peak of 6.9 million in March, it's still well above pre-pandemic levels. What we find is that this, again, is another issue that divides America, with about 70 percent of Trump voters saying we should limit damage to the economy and 90 percent of Biden voters saying we should limit the spread of the coronavirus. Biden has promised that under his leadership, the federal government will promote mask wearing, beef up testing and tracing, and ensure an eventual vaccine is distributed to Americans free of charge. His campaign has said the world's largest economy can only recover if its people are healthy. Paulo Montesilio, TRT World. Well, for more on what we can expect from a Biden presidency, let's go to Christian Lawrence in New York. He's a senior market strategist at Ribobank and has been following the election closely. Welcome back to the program, Christian. Now, firstly, markets had priced in a democratic landslide, a so-called blue wave. We know that hasn't happened, but are they still betting on a Biden victory once all the votes are counted? Well, it's great to be back on. And yes, certainly, the market now is essentially trading a Biden victory, but still the Republicans maintaining hold of the Senate. And we can see that whether we look at the equity markets or whether we look at the interest rate markets. The interest rates had, uh, we'd seen the yield curve steepen, so long end rates had risen quite dramatically on the hope of a blue wave, thinking that we'd get a huge fiscal stimulus package through. But now it looks likely that the uh, Republicans will hold on to the Senate. We have seen that priced out and yields have moved back down again. And when it comes to the equity market, we can again see very clearly that there are hopes that uh, we will see some sort of fiscal stimulus. But essentially, because of the Republican Senate, we're not going to see those large tax increases that the market feared. Um, and that really is feeding through into the outperformance of things like healthcare, uh, technology stocks. And the other point to mention is, of course, regulation. With a Republican Senate, we won't get some major changes there either. But at the same time, when it comes to trade, which comes under the White House, the outlook is a lot more favorable. So we're kind of in this perfect position for markets where they're benefiting all around. That being said, uh, the typical reflation trade that we have seen, that has taken a bit of a backseat. But 
there's a lot of risk still remaining, that's for sure. Yes, uh, let's look at one of the key issues that has roiled markets before this pandemic took hold, and that's the US-China trade war. We know that was a, a fixture for both investors and the economy for quite some time until coronavirus. Under a Biden presidency, are investors hoping that perhaps relations with China might ease or at least the trade relationship might ease? Well, I think we're going to see an easing up in, um, or I should say, an improvement in trade globally under the Biden administration, a lot less protectionism for sure. That's one of the reasons why we're seeing the US dollar come down a little bit. A protectionist government is more bullish for the US dollar. But when it comes to China specifically, I actually think that Biden is still going to take quite a hard line there. And actually, you could argue that on a longer term basis, Biden might mean an even tougher stance with China because he's more likely to try and bring other countries into the fray. And Europe is a particular standout there, whilst Trump, of course, was trying to go it alone. That being said, obviously, we're less likely to get that bombastic rhetoric that we had under Trump. So on a day to day basis, probably a little bit less volatility when it comes to trade expectations. But no, I think this uh, this struggle between the US and China this is really a battle for global hegemony. Uh, China wants to become the number one, world's number one superpower, and the US is going to try and stop that, regardless of who the president is. Now, let's look at Joe Biden's uh, tax plan, because as we know, he wants to raise uh, taxes on those earning more than $400,000. He also wants to raise the corporate tax rate, which Donald Trump wound back uh, dramatically from 35% back in 2017. Should investors be worried by what Joe Biden wants in terms of uh, tax reform? Well, I think market price action at the moment is implying that we shouldn't be worried. Uh, the other thing that we do have in, in Biden's tax plan was an increase to capital gains tax. Now, if the Senate was looking like it would turn blue, we would expect equities to come off quite sharply on the back of that, simply because people would want to sell now rather than paying higher capital gains tax further down the line. So the fact we're not seeing that, I think, really emphasises the point that the market is expecting the, the, the Senate to remain Republican, and it's not expecting a lot of the Biden's tax plan to actually come to fruition and get through the Senate. Can I ask you about uh, the prospect of more stimulus now? We know the Republicans and Democrats had been tussling uh, for months in the lead up to election. No deal has emerged. But we also know that if Joe Biden does win this election, uh, President Donald Trump will remain in the White House until January. Uh, are you hopeful that uh, between now and when he leaves the White House, uh, we'll see more stimulus measures, uh, more perhaps a, a broader deal that many millions of Americans are really crying out for during this pandemic? Well, I don't think Trump was ever actually an obstacle to greater fiscal stimulus. Um, I think actually if we'd have had a blue Senate and Trump was, was um, uh, the president, as of course he was, then we probably would have already seen a two trillion plus package going through. The main obstacle has been the Senate. And of course, if that does remain Republican, then we're almost back to where we started when it comes to these negotiations. That being said, there was, of course, a lot of political wrangling heading up to the election. And once we know the outcome of that, presumably that some of that will drop out. So it should be easier to, to come to a deal. But I don't think that Trump was ever the major obstacle there. It was the Senate. But certainly we won't see the size of fiscal stimulus package we would, we would have seen if Biden had won and the Democrats had managed to win the Senate. OK, in the meantime, we'll wait and see who emerges as the winner from uh, this election. Christian Lawrence from Rabobank, a pleasure as always. Thank you.